Season three of CBC's hit series, Son of a Critch, is airing in January, premiering a brand new season. Mark Critch, it's going to follow you around as a young boy in, in St. John's, Newfoundland. Uh, tell us a little bit about what we're going to see young Mark do in this season. Well, this year is the beginning of the end in a way in that he is a grade nine. So he is the uh, king of the castle when it comes to the playground. It's uh, going to be leaving junior high. It's his last year. And um, so this season sees us saying goodbye to the school uh, and uh, a lot of the characters there on that playground. So it's kind of nice to see them grow up. Benjamin's about a foot taller and uh, a year wiser. Uh, so it was uh, great to see, but it's kind of sad to say goodbye to St. Bonds. How have the first two seasons been received so far? Great, you know, we, uh, we've done really well uh, here in Canada, viewer-wise and with reviews and stuff. And down in the States, things are going well. We're the number one comedy on the CW. And um, we got great reviews from the Wall Street Journal and the LA Times and the New York Post and stuff. So it, it went better than I thought it would. I just mm -hmm. assumed nobody's going to watch that, sure. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then, then they seem to like it. And all over the place. Uh, we just, I just ran into a fella at the Duke of Duckworth, surprisingly, and he had uh, he had moved here from Switzerland, originally born in Pakistan, and he was working with the UN in Geneva, and he had seen Son of a Critch, and he liked it over there watching, and then he uh, Googled Newfoundland, looked on the government website, and got a job in the finance department, and moved here, and he was telling me all this. I was like, oh, you moved here from Switzerland? <laughs> <laughs> But anyway, God love them. So you don't know how these, you put these things out in the world and you don't know how it'll impact people. Yeah, wow, that's an amazing story. It's very odd. Yeah, I, <laughs> I, I want to ask you more about how the show has been received in the States because there are so many Newfoundlandisms in it that I crack up laughing at, but how are other people receiving it? Well, I think specificity uh, is, is big in TV these days, or uh, one particular place that you might not know. I think people are used to, it's not like when I was a kid and every show was set in New York. Uh, people are used to watching things on streaming. You might watch a show you know, set in Iceland or something. But at the end of the day, the issues are all, are all pretty uh, universal, you know, uh, being in love for the first time, getting bullied, things like that. So people connect with it, but they, they find the little Newfoundlandisms just kind of interesting and, and cool and mm -hmm. might send a few more people Googling Newfoundland. The film and television industry here is growing so much. Son of, Son of a Critch is part of that. Tell us a little bit about the impact that the show has here on the industry and the local economy. Well, when I was a kid, the idea of getting up and walking out of your house and doing a TV show or something, is very, very, very rare. And every now and then Gordon Pinsett would come home from the mainland and he'd been in a movie. It's like, oh, that buddy was on television. And now, my God, you have you know, Hudson and Rex and us and lots of great films and all the Christmas movies and stuff. So what I love is seeing uh, young people who play uh, our class, the background performers on, on the show, uh, they're on a set where that is completely possible. And the idea of, oh, I might be a camera person one day, or I might do lighting, or I might drive transport vehicles. They can look around and say, okay, this is an industry. Now, I want to go back to the show. In the show, you play your dad. You know, your dad was a newsman. He talked uh, about people's lives on the air. Yeah. No stranger to being on the air, but what do you think your mom and dad would have thought about seeing their lives play out in this show? If mom and dad had been around for this, I think... Uh, they would feel the same way my brother does, which is probably equally parts proud and mortified <laughs> when you're like, you know, what are you, what are you talking about that for? Why are you talking about that for? It's like, it was important to me. Don't tell people about this. You know, so I think that they would be telling me, my God, Mark, you can't be saying that. Good God, you've embarrassed your mother. But then secretly going around the mall telling people, did you see the show last night? But I would be the last one to know mm -hmm. that they liked it. <laughs> All right. Well, we've been talking about season three in this interview. What about a season four? I hope so. You know, things are going well. Um, and I, I would hope there would be a season four. If we do have a season four, then we would be going to a holy heart of Mary Regional High School, uh, which I went to. Mm -hmm. And it would be much bigger, that big theater there where I fell in love with performing and um, and, and closer to downtown, getting in a bit of trouble. So that would be, we'd be saying goodbye in this season to uh, Junior High and St. Bonds and that, that world. And then he, once he gets comfortable there, you blow all that up and you put him in a bigger, scarier place because uh, that's the way life is. Awesome. Mark, thank you so much for telling us about season three and being here with us today. Thank you so much for the support.